G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and today I'm down here at my quail pen and we've had a few major disasters or dramas you could say and they're still rolling on so I thought I'd pop this video and show you guys what's been happening. I've been meaning to give you an update on the quail pen if you've watched my videos before on quail and the previous video which I'll put in the description below you would have seen that I was trialling some grass. I put a, a metre square patch of grass in the quail pen because I thought, you know, we'll see how it goes. Maybe the grass will grow nice and it'll have a, a sort of a nice texture and area for the quails to play in. Well, it didn't do a very good job at all. In fact, even though I watered it and tried my best, the extra manure and the, the quails eating it just didn't work. So. That was a complete waste of time, but at least now I know that plants and maybe larger plants but, and, and that type of thing might work, but grassing the quail pen, it's a no-go. It's a bit like a chicken pen or a duck pen. They just clear out every little bit of foliage and vegetation. So, A, that's a no-go. The other thing that I wanted to show you guys was the rat situation. Now, rats and rodents, they're, they're the mortal enemy of quail. They hate quail, they'll attack quail and, and they'll eat quail. And when I first started keeping quail, I had no idea that rats could be so devastating and I was keeping them in a quail cage down the back here and it was up off the ground, but the rats still found ways to get there and grab the quails as they were putting their head out to, to feed into the feeding troughs and all that type of thing. So I realized pretty quickly that you know, I've got to keep my quail away from rats. So it's one of the main reasons I built this big large pen was to do exactly that. Keep the rats and rodents away from the quail, keep the snakes away from the quail and also all these other predators like the hawks and the owls, uh, carpet snakes that'll all love and eat these tiny little birds. Ironically, we've got now rats that have decided to start nesting between the mesh at the top of the roof here and the poly roofing that keeps the quail dry and, and weatherproof. So somehow, well not somehow, I know they're getting through the holes or the gaps between the poly roofing and the framework of the quail pen and then they're climbing in there and they're obviously nesting in that area so that it's probably nice and dry for them and it's warm and a perfect spot. This is an issue because although the rats can't get in the pen and that's great, you know, you don't want stinking rodents and rats nesting in your quail pen, weeing and, and, and dropping manure from the roof cavity you know, into the pen itself. Now that's unhealthy, that's unhygienic and uh, it's got to stop. The other thing was yesterday when I was down here and I found these rats in the quail pen. What happened was I inadvertently left the door open and a whole heap of quail escaped. Now I was able to grab a few which I thought I'd clean them up and this afternoon I've realized that I can hear quail calling out. I've been thinking these fellas in here are calling out rather a lot today and I was wondering why and then I realized that I could hear a quail from the adjoining property over here calling out and this is just bushland behind me, so what I'm going to have to do is get in there and find it. So wish me luck. Alright, here's the back of the quail pen. So what's happened is, did you hear that call? That call came from my left. What's happened is that male quail has gotten out of the pen out of the front door there, flowing over the coop fence and has gotten through the property, through my dog proof fence and then through where my dog is there, Scooter, our back fence and into the bushland. And it's in there somewhere. It's only a matter of time before it gets eaten by a snake or a hawk or an owl and calling out like that, it's not going to it's not going to last too much longer. So I've got to. So you can see my dog is uh, is interested in something in there. He's standing right there. He knows that we've had an escape and we've got to find him.
All right. Well, I'll go looking. Here we've got a hawk. Now this is the problem. We've got a hawk that's just come through. See if I can catch him. See? That's what I'm talking about. There's a there's a hawk and this fella is likely gonna get my quail before I do. Because if he's here, he's probably spotted. He's probably spotted him already. Bloody spotted him. There he is there. Can't believe it. Now, which way to go? If I approach, if I approach from that way, come back around, I might be able to scare him back towards my property. Work quick, he's going. Oh, gotcha! <laughs> hey, what a catch! Got him, yes! Right, young fella. You look like you've been having a rough night. Okay, you'll be right. I'll get you. I'll get you back home. There's a little fella. Hey, I bet you'll be glad to get home. It's a terrible jungle out there and you wouldn't have lasted very long, mate. Okay, you're free, buddy. Your adventure is over. You're lucky. So there you go. Hey, how to find a quail in a haystack. I was quite lucky that I could pinpoint the area from his calls and I was lucky I turned up then before that hawk got him. The, the, I was the only reason I'm sure of it. I've seen that hawk, or maybe not him, but other hawks like him, pinned to our quail pen with their talons on the edge wishing they could get through it to get to the quails. They are such a tempting bird to, to eat. For so many things. That Kyle was very lucky that I found him, could pinpoint the call and all that, uh, and now he's happily back in safety. The rats are nesting between the wire and the poly roof. That's going to be a bit of an issue. If you've got any ideas, you know, I need to fix this probably within the week. So if you have some ideas, quickly whack them in the description below and uh, I'm, I'm all ears that'll be fantastic otherwise I might use a bit of that um, instant foam stuff you get in a can I'm thinking that might work to fill each of those holes up between the framework and the poly roofing or I might use some poly gap filler or something like that uh, but there's a lot of gaps to fill, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to go about it or what an easy way would be, but um, certainly if I had to fill each gap separately with a little piece of wood or something, it'd take a long time. So I'm looking at some type of filler, but anyway. The last point, of course, is showing you the quail pen after that refurb, which is the last quail video I did. You can see how quickly the quail convert all that straw into manure and uh, and mulch 
what I'll do now is probably tomorrow is add some extra straw to that because I only completely refurb the pen about once every six months. It's a waste of time to do it too often to be quite honest. It's just not necessary. Uh, unless you've got a lot of birds in there that's making you a lot of mess. The grass in the pen, that was a disaster. That didn't work. So I wouldn't recommend putting grass in a quail pen or any chicken pen for that matter. It just doesn't work. The birds eat it. The extra manure burns it off. So that didn't work. Anyway, it was a happy ending finding that uh, male quail out there in the jungle. Thanks a lot for watching. Any questions, whack them below. Don't forget the website selfsufficientme.com. Bye for now.